Hello again, and welcome to, <clears throat> excuse me, episode eight of our GK Icon Academy's USA panel discussions. Today we have on our panel, we have Coach Mark Duffield, uh, the men's coach at Penn State New Kensington, and he is also the goalkeeper coach for your NPSL Pittsburgh Hotspurs here in Pittsburgh. Um, he's also a DOC of goalkeeping at a, at a local club. Uh, Sam Griewitz, she is the assistant and goalkeeper coach at the, um, let me say, I always get this wrong, California University of Pennsylvania, <laughs> UCAL, as I we always easily say, um, and she's also a goalkeeper coach here at a, at a local club. We also have Coach Matt Piscaglia, who is goalkeeper coach at the University of Pittsburgh in Greensburg, and he's also, he just won or received the honor as the 2019 ODP, ODP PA West Goalkeeper Coach of the Year. And uh, we're going to jump right into our conversation, guys. So we're going to start. Today's topic is working out of the back and, and the goalkeeper's role. And Matt, I'm going to start with you if I could. I'd like you to get into um, like, what do you see at the college game? What do you see in the academy levels? Are there any <laughs> consistent themes that you see regarding working out of the back with the goalkeeper? Yeah, so being at the Division three level for college, um, we actually don't see it a whole lot. Uh, we like to stress it a lot and really uh, make a point to try to keep the ball ourselves. Um, we just believe that that's going to help our guys become better soccer players the more that they have to be on the ball, doing the simple things, um, and just keeping the ball, making the other team sort of chase in a sense. Um, we, we, we think that helps them become better soccer players. But we don't really see that from our opponents a lot. And uh, as per my experience, I see it a lot more with the youth game. Um, obviously, uh, just became much more of a, um, an importance over the last couple years, uh, in the youth game to just stress keeping the ball. Um, and really that starts with the goalkeeper. So the goalkeeper can probably have the biggest role in that. Um, you know, we have the ball in our hands off a save, off a shot, something like that. Um, and then what we start with the ball, what we do with it next, just, can uh, dictate how how our team is going to move forward. Um, so obviously both with having the ball ourselves and then not only with our communication, can that really just uh, come all the way back to us and guiding our team, helping our team build um, and just keeping the ball. But um, I definitely do see a lot more in the youth right now than I do in the college, uh, just based on my, my own experience so far. Fair enough. Coach Sam, same, same conversation. You see, or same question, excuse me. You see the, uh, the academy level, and you also see the college game on the women's side. Give me, t talk to me about what you see. I see similar patterns in that maybe a little bit more at the Division II level of trying to play out of the back, but I would agree that I see it a lot more in the youth uh, age groups, which is really important because that's when you should be teaching it, especially now with you know, the head, no heading rule, the build out line that a lot of uh, really younger teams are using so that they can build those skills. And hopefully now that a lot more coaches and teams and clubs are teaching that building out of the back is very important, that that'll eventually transition as these kids get older and into the college game, we'll be able to see that a lot more because it's definitely something that's important and sometimes underutilized. Um, as a technique and a tactic to really build up that play. Fair. Coach Mark, you see it from the academy level up to the NPSL level. So uh, do you see a difference in what Mark and, and Sam, I'm sorry, what Matt and Sam are saying or what's, what's your experience? Like I said, I mean, just the organization I'm at, you can actually see a natural progression from the youth academy trying to play out from the back. And that flows all the way up into the first team. The you know, Pittsburgh Hotspurs and the NPSL always – have that philosophy of trying to play out from the back. I do jump on what Sam says. I feel like the way the modern game is being coached at the youth level will impact the college game, where you'll see a lot more teams having that confidence. Coaches now trying to play out from the back because this new generation of players is becoming second nature to them. Right now, from what I've seen, even in some of the NPSL teams and from a college perspective, a lot of the teams try that direct style. I actually had the pleasure of, well, I played against Matt's college team. It was nice because both of our teams actually tried to play out from the back. It was very refreshing. And it was nice for me to kind of see his team uh, playing like that too as well. 
What from? Let's start with the academy level then. Sam made, made a good point of, of saying, you know, there's the build out line now, which really emphasizes uh, building out of the back from a young young age, as, as well as the no heading. You know, so it takes it removes the punting away from it. Um, and Coach Mark, let's start with you. What do you what do you talk to your goalkeepers about when it comes to um, their role in building out of the back? I would say confidence and the foundation of it. You know, um, you know, especially the organization, organization I'm at, very much encourage the goalkeepers. That's how you want the guys to play out from the back. So I always try and incorporate a lot of work training sessions with the goalkeepers. Um, every time we have a session, before the session starts, you might play 2v2, 3v3 to kind of play, get them used to playing with their feet. And a lot of the activities involve uh, playing out from the back. Um, but like for me personally, it's hugely encourage it. You know, all the goalies will always try and look, play that short pass. Um, now, playing out the back might mean hitting the two centre backs, or it might be the intelligence of also hitting the number six as well. Playing out from the back doesn't necessarily mean, okay, if I get the ball, I've got to hit it straight to my centre back. I also try to encourage them, try and find if that six, you know, the central midfielder is free as well, can you play them as well? Yeah. And you kind of coach the players from there too. Yeah, Coach Sam, what's your, um, I mean, people are going to fail, especially in the younger ages. This is going to fail. People are going to mess up. They're going to pass the other team. The other team's going to score. What, do you, what guidance do you give a goalkeeper or a coach in particular at, their, at that age group? Like Mark was saying, I just try to encourage them to continue working on it, continue practicing at it. At the younger ages, like you said, the mistakes are going to happen. And so as long as they're starting to look for those options, look for that pass, look to build out as opposed to just kick and run, then that's progress for me. And so I'm just going to try to, even if they make the mistake, passes it to the other player or, you know, the other team, I'm still going to encourage them to continue doing it, continue looking and fine tune those small details in, in terms of how to avoid making those mistakes. Yeah. Can I jump in? So oh, the Mark, key word, sorry, the key word is development. Well development said. over development over results. Yep. I always say, like at a young age, if you go online now and type, you know, we live in Pier West. You typed in Pier West and try to find the score for a, a U8 game. It would say Team A zero, Team B zero. Okay, the score could have been whatever, but ultimately it's zero zero. It's development over result, and coaches, parents, and everyone has to realize at a young age. It's all about development. Don't get on the keep. They're going to make mistakes. It's going to happen. They're going to play the ball out. It's going to fall short or whatever. But don't discourage them because if you discourage them at a young age, it's going to stop their growth going forwards. Yeah, and, and truthfully too, Mark, what I'm going to add to that is when, when, when those failures happen, that's the perfect opportunity to coach. And I tell young coaches all the time, man, like those are the opportunities when you want to have a nice conversation with those people and you can't show – the temperament of, of emotion during that time, because they're going to respond to what your reaction is. And if you can utilize those opportunities as a coaching moment, you're going to get more advancement quicker. I believe if you're, if you're they're going to advance and develop Mark to your word, to, to the, your word with uh, a lot quicker. I believe, I think it's going to resonate. Coach Matt, when does it start to matter? When do results matter? What age? Um, I mean, you could, I think at a youth level, if we're talking club, um, truthfully, that's all development. Um, you know, if you're playing for your high school team, results can matter. Um, once you get into the college game, results matter. But, you know, honestly, I think that in the, in the, in the club uh, area of the game, it's, it's development. Um, obviously, you're looking to compete and get better. Uh, but, you know, just – consistent competition um, and your consistent training on a club side of things is, is what's going to help you get better. Um, and yeah, it's great to maybe win games and it's not so great to lose games. Um, but that's why you're playing your, your, your club is to aid you in playing extra games, get extra training um, to achieve your goal. If it's going on to play uh, for your high school team or in going to college to play soccer as well. But I, I view it as, you know, the club side of things is could be development all the way, all the way up. Fair point. Coach Sam, with the, your experience at the club level, when do you start to focus in on and hone in on results? 
I'd also say around the high school age because that's when you should or the players should start to sort of have that not necessarily mastering of the techniques but they should have a pretty good foundation a pretty good foundation and grasp of everything that should be expected of them and that's also when you start to see separation of skills and abilities big time and you you know you see who's who's progressing faster than others at the high school level at those younger ages it's all it's all development you know they all progress at different places and i think all the way up until that high school level it, it it's developmental nice. mark what are the key development points that you're working on we talked about obviously fall at the feet but what about the the tactical part of the game and, and the education that goes along with working out of the back it's not like you you don't just get in a field and say, all right, work it out of the back. You know, what are some of the actual focus on this? Here's how you want to organize. You mentioned organization earlier. Talk to me about what you say to your goalkeepers who are trying to work it out of the back for the first few times or in the first years of development, so to speak, with that tactical uh, awareness of working it out of the back. What's, what's your message to them? Well, yeah, so a, a standard setup, this is just a standard setup would be the four and the two center backs would sit to the edge of the edge of the box. The two and the three go higher and wider. And then what you should have in theory, you should have a six and eight, two central midfielders, and their job should be to rotate in that position, okay? Now, a simple first instruction for the goalkeeper, you know, simply you just play it out to the centre-back. Okay, can you play it out to that centre-back? Can you then look and say, okay, if the centre-back's not on, what is the rotation between the six and the eight? Maybe the six drop in. Every time the six drops in, does that mean you always play him or her the ball? Or is he or she making that space for the eight then to get the ball. So then you've got to be tactically aware of how the six and the eight are moving. Then to the next block, do I necessarily have to go to my centre back straight away? No. As the goalkeeper gets a better technique and a better understanding of the tactics, can I now miss out the two centre backs and can I go straight to my two and three? Can I ping that ball just in front of them? Can I give them that good ball where we get our guys on the counter attack? And from the next side is, is me missing out that and going straight to my seven and ten, that's still a form of playing out from the back. And if you watch Edison when he plays for Man City, he'll do that sometimes and go straight to the seven and uh, seven eleven as well. What age, Mark? When when are you when are you starting to give him that tactical awareness? I mean, for me, I would call it the uh, youth development phase, which would be geez, U thirteen stuff. Like, I think that's when they start to get, and especially when they, when they're in the college prep phase, which would be like what, freshmen in, in college, in, sorry, in high school, they should be getting all that awareness. I think it's like a building block. When you're the foundation phase, simply stuff like this, it should be like a triangular motion. You know, maybe hit it to the center back, do you hit it to the six, do you hit it to the five? Once you get to the next phase, hey, okay, now can you see like the two and the three? Now you've got a bit more strength in your leg. Can you now hit it a bit further up? Get a bit more progressed on? Okay, now how, how tactically are aware are you? Do you see the movement of the six and the eight when they're rotating round? When to hit one, when to hit to the other? Knowing the cues of the movement of players. Well said. Don, I want to talk about the cues. I love what you just said. Coach Sam, what cues do you teach your goalkeepers to look for when building out of the back from, um, from your own teammates, but as well as from uh, what, what you're seeing from a defensive standpoint in front of you? The cues that I look for is – and I'll use the example of I just, I'm a goalkeeper and I just received a pass back from my teammate. I'm going to look for their bo body positioning, the two and the three that he was talking about. They need to be high and wide, but also facing at an ang inwards at an angle so that they can still see the field. I might not want to pass to somebody who's just square back to me unless that's their only option. Um, in terms of where the opponents are, I need to be aware of that as well, because if I see, if I have the ball at my feet and I maybe see one of my defenders thinking they're wide open, I need to be aware of who's around them and what their options are as well so that I'm playing the safest pass. So even if my defender's seemingly wide open, I'm always trying to get keepers to think ahead for, but what are their options? So if I play it to this place, what is my teammates' options from there and trying to think ahead and seeing and recognizing those things as quickly as possible? Well, I like that. I like that. Coach, Matt, when, what are the, let's talk about low pressure versus high pressure. You know, let's, let's build on what Coach Sam was just saying. And, and you, you see in front of you, you're under high pressure. What, what advice are you giving 
your goalkeeper under high pressure when you're still looking to try and build it out of the back? Yeah, uh, whenever, if there's a team that's high pressing us, our own team, um, this can be something done through training, experience, but obviously you always want them to try to be as calm as they can be. You know, you always want your goalkeeper to be cool, calm, and collected with the ball at their feet, confident. Um, so if using that same example we were just talking about, um, if there's a defender uh, or if there's a striker rather uh, that's pressuring my back, that's trying to play me the ball back, as that ball as that ball is coming back to me, there can be a lot of moving pieces. So I could have um, that defender chasing after the ball, starting to apply pressure to me, or they can just kind of back off to just take away that pass straight back to uh, my back that I just got from. But as I'm receiving that ball, that's when I want to start to look up and look at the other side. Um, and I think that's huge for younger goalkeepers. If they can look ahead, just like Sam said, you know, kind of figure out where that path, that next pass is going to go before that ball even gets to them. So obviously, depending on how uh, big or short that pass might be from my defender, uh, it's going to de depend on how much time I have to look. But if I can get a look, just take that peek, take a picture, as we like to say, of that far side, see what that looks like. You know, that might be a one-touch pass, you know, to switch it to the other side of the field. Might be a touch first and then go the other way. Uh, but just depends on those defensive cues, like what that defender that, or the striker that's trying to defend us, uh, how much pressure, how quickly they're moving. And then when I do take a look at that far side, uh, looking, seeing – seeing what that looks like over there. You know, does my next center back that could be, uh, do they have time? Do they have space or is somebody pressuring them? And then, or maybe it might even be my outside back over there, but either way, it's just getting an idea on what that side looks like, how much time and space, the next closest player to them. Um, but, you know, just taking that picture as that ball is coming to us to prepare and know where that ball is going before we even have it. Yeah. Coach Mark, I, I, Build on what Coach Matt was saying, but I want you to focus specifically on the communication um, with the goalkeeper and what they what they might be saying. What are some of the key phrases goalkeepers might be talking to their teammates or saying to their teammates when under high pressure, but you're still looking to you know play out of the back? I mean, you got, when you when you're under high pressure, I mean, you definitely got to try and find those gaps. I think if a team pressures you super high, they do leave certain gaps. You got you know you want to encourage them to look for that passing lane. Can you find those gaps in behind? Can you sometimes miss out? Because no, normally, like I said, if I'm playing out from the back and, and I go to my center back, if I go a high press, can I now look to the next zone? Can I now look towards my central players? Okay, I'm trying to move on to the next phase of the play. Can I hit, miss out and go straight to my central midfielders? I think, so one thing we noticed from these discussions, how like goalkeep, goalkeeping position, there's so much to it. Like from this, just playing out from the back, goalkeepers have to be so tactically aware it's unbelievable. I think people underestimate how much goes into the goalkeeping from a, just from playing out from the back element. Absolutely. And I think too, like it's, it's, you know, a forward can miss nine shots, but bury one and it's one nothing win. And he's the hero. You know, we're playing out of the back 10 times. We mess up once we lose one, nothing. It's our like, the spotlights on us. So, you know, we can't afford to, to mess that up. And, you know, I, I love the, the, we speak about this all the time though. You know, sometimes you have to play short, to play long, right? Like, so you're playing short to get suck them into a quadrant and then that'll open up maybe that longer ball. So when you are playing out of the back, it doesn't necessarily mean a short game. It just means you're looking to play first in that area of the field to set something up for those penetrating passes or that long ball when everyone does move to that space that's behind them. And the, ver the opposite happens too. When, you know, sometimes we're gonna, goalkeeper just gonna thump it to get that defense to respect that back up a little bit which gives us more space sometimes in the future, in the near future of that game. So you can start playing short a little easier. So sometimes you have to play long to really take advantage of the space that's provided to, uh, for the short ball afterwards. And, and, you know, you just have to plan ahead. I, I like how you guys were talking about that. Um, let's, let's speak to the, uh, the, high, the low pressure. You know, teams are backing off. You, you have the ball. What are you, where are you going with it? When I say low pressure, I mean, they're really kind of compact in front of you, but they're, let's say 35, 40 yards away, and, and you're on your goal line. Or they're, they're backing up into that area, so to speak, the bottom of the circle or top of the circle. Coach Sam, what are you, what are you advising your goalkeepers to do, to say, and how are you positioning your back line? Well, when, when thinking about this topic beforehand, uh, a diagram that you had actually posted came to mind, and I tried so hard to find it before this. 
just with how we should be playing when we're in possession in different areas of the field. And that plays a little bit into what you were saying about looking for the penetrating passes versus just playing the ball around. So when it's in a low pressure situation like that, where they've backed off a little bit, we have a little bit more breathing room. That's when maybe our back four, if we are playing with the back four, can look to be passing it around, trying to draw movements from the attacking team so that we can find those gaps, find those penetrating passes, and try to advance the ball forward. So me as a keeper, I'm trying to tell the back line, I'm keeping an eye on where the ball is, as well as where the opponents are and their movements, so that I can see maybe there's a gap or there's a chance to switch if they start to get sucked over with the ball, then maybe a quick switch is going to be a good option to an open teammate on the other side. So those are the things I'm looking for, the things I'm talking to my back line about. Coach, Matt, where, where's the goalkeeper position during this? Are they inside their box? Are they far? Like, where would you like your goalkeeper to be if it, you are under a low pressure and they're backing off to that circle? Where, um, how do you like them? To, what, what's their role? Like, how far out? What are they doing? Talk to me. Yes, I just want to double check. You like talking circle of, the, of, of half? You know, Halfway. Half, half to half to half circle. Yes. Great. Great question. Sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, if we see the teams backing off, um, we can start to take more and more space. So if we're possessing the ball in our own half and a team, you know, their highest player, their line of confrontation is at the circle from half of half on our side of the field, you know, goalkeeper will just start could definitely be outside their 18. Um, there's no reason for us to be um, that deep into our own box. Um, we, we, our goal is to uh, move the ball forward and, the, and, and goal is to score. So the higher we can start and build our possession, uh, the higher off or the better off we'll be, uh, depending on how stretched or um, or deep the other team might be. You know, obviously that dictates how high our, our highest player can be. Uh, but if we can start our our own line and possessing the ball, you know, we should definitely be outside our own box at this point. Yeah, gotcha. Mark, talk to me about the importance of footwork at all levels with what Coach Matt was just saying. I mean, footwork moving across the goal. But in, oh, in footwork with the ball at the feet, sorry. Oh, I mean, geez. I mean, I think I think it's crucial. I just want to go back to the low press yeah. real fast, sorry. That's all right. The low press is very important as a goalkeeper to make sure the flow of the ball can constantly moves. Because I know I've adopted a low pressure in my time against certain teams. And the aim there is to totally frustrate them and force them into certain balls and then gain possession. But it's very important for us goalkeepers when we're back in that position to make sure everyone stays calm and don't just panic and try and whack the ball. Because if I'm setting up a low press, in theory, I'm trying to be like, hey, I want you guys to play that long ball into this area so then we can go. Okay, it's very important that you keep encouraging your players to continue to adapt, knock it around, try and pull them out of position. And then once they make that one mistake, boom, then you play that ball in behind you, hit, you hit that pan train pass. Um, going back to the footwork for goalkeeper, you know, I, th I think it's huge. I think the, the footwork part for the goalkeepers is huge. That's why I say I always try and encourage goalkeepers now to go out there, try and play futsal during the off-season. Don't go in goal in futsal. Don't even go in goal. Put, you know, go on, go on field. Because the way the game's going now, it's very important for you to be, you know, if you're the uh, point guard or the quarterback sometimes, you're the one center of the plays, you're knocking it around. It's very important if you can have that good foot skills. Yeah, I... I, I... We can't emphasize that more than what you just did. The well, well done. I, it's, it's so important. Now, it's almost like you're a field player with gloves on, you, you know, and I, I can't emphasize footwork enough in, in today's game. I mean, look, look, if you look at three of the best goalkeepers right now, in my opinion, might be wrong, Neuer, Edison, and Allison. okay? What do they, all those three guys have in common? Mm. They're all they're just so, they're so good with their feet. All you got to do is go on YouTube a couple of times Type in their names and you'll see some fantastic videos about how the modern goalkeeper should be. Yeah, yeah. Gone Coach, are the days where you get it and just lump it. Yeah. Those, those days are done. Start with what you just said. You get it. Like, let's pretend we just got the ball off of a cross. Um, it, whether the, the team was – the opposition was building up and they put a ball in the box, you come out, you take it. Uh, well, even if you're looking to build it out of the back, so to speak – Coach Matt, what do, you, what do you advise your goalkeeper to do or where do you ask, advise them to look when they're in possession and the other team is all um, not in your 
defensive third, but in your half, and they, you almost just end one of their breaks, so to speak. And now we're looking for a transition. What do you, what do you advise your goalkeepers? Where are you looking for them to get the ball to? Yeah, next place to look is that, that opposite side, that far side. Um, so, for example, we take, that, we take the ball in off a cross. Uh, if it's from my left side, um, I'm, next thing is I'm doing, I'm just looking up to that right side. Uh, might be my winger out wide, or if we're just playing with one or maybe two strikers, it could be that striker that's you know just kind of shaded over to that side, uh, depending on what your situation is. But there's definitely times to to go bigger from from when we have the ball. Um, there's times for both to go short and to go bigger. Um, they can be really dangerous, you know, that can lead to a counterattack of sort. But that's where our distribution comes into play. Um, you know, if we can get very good with a longer throw, not everybody has that, but then that's where we can use a half volley or even a side volley. Um, that, that can be super dangerous, especially if the, if the other team is caught out, maybe a corner kick even. Um, you know, we look to find our striker maybe on the far side once we win the ball in the air. Um, but then the same thing too is we have to be good with going in, going up for our crosses. So there's a lot of moving pieces um, for the goalkeeper to get ourselves in a situation like that. Um, so to put ourselves in that situation, you know, we're also talking about distribution and our crosses and then even our communication even. But, you know, that can definitely, definitely be very dangerous um, in certain points of the games. And there's certainly time for it rather than going short. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's one thing I like to teach my goalkeepers, too, is when they do have that cross in their hand, they just took it down. You know, your first look needs to be up. You know, and can you beat a few lines of the defense? Can you beat the defense by getting a throw to half or skipping into a number nine, checking back, or a 10 or 7 or 11? You know, always look to beat <clears throat> the, op the defensive um, setup when they're not set up. You know, it's like you're getting them in that transition. Can you quickly distribute that ball? Um, however – there are a lot of variables that come into play with that as well. So uh, coach Sam, what variables would impact that decision-making process uh, when you take that ball in or just your philosophy on building out of the back as a, as a whole? I think the time, the time of the game and the score of the game are one of the most important variables because if say it's late in the game and my team is down a goal, I might be more inclined to see if I can play it a lot quicker versus relaxing, giving them time to clear out. But I also need to take into account where is the opponent. If it's late in the game, I'm, my team's down and there's a bunch of the opponents around me or, you know, marking up on my defenders, it's probably not going to be the smartest to try to play short because then – we're very vulnerable to a counterattack, And then I might just want to try to play it quickly long to maybe my forward is hanging high up by the 50. And I just want to try to get it to them as quickly as possible. If it's still, you know, a lot of time in the game, maybe the score is tied or we're up, then I might be a little bit more relaxed about it. I might, you know, take my time, see if I can find those options. Once I bring in the ball, see if we can build up because we still got time. It's not as urgent for me to play as quickly as possible. Right. Coach Mark, speak to the variables and what are you talking to your goalkeepers about? About like what variables are you talking to your goalkeepers about when it comes to making those those decisions? Coach Mark. All right, Coach Matt, I want to push the same. No, question. sorry, no, I didn't have I didn't have the mute on. There I'm you mute go. on. Sorry. Okay. Um, no, no, I think I think the. Everyone's instinct is to get the ball and just hit it as far as it goes super fast. You know, we see you watch a youth game, a lot of the time the goalkeeper's gonna get it and they distribute and you look at me like, what are you doing? I think the big thing for the goalkeepers is the tactical awareness. Okay, like like Sam said, if I'm winning one nil and a cross comes in the box, I'm gonna take it, I'm going right down, I'm gonna sit on it, I'm gonna have a look a little round for a few minutes, get up, and then I'm gonna start deciding what I'm gonna do. Whereas if, I, if I'm losing 1-0, I would, before that cross comes in, I've taken a quick check to my right-hand side. I've got it, and I know that Eric's out wide. Boom, he's on his bike. He's going to go. I've got to be aware of the whole situation that's going. Like I said, so the big thing is, what minute of it is the game? Are we winning or losing? And also the situation around me. Do, you know, If I take a quick look and I see that my fullback's on the move, I'm going to catch that. 
and I'm going to go straight to my fullback. You know, yeah. I think I think it's a lot of game management decisions. Yeah. Or I think it's, 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 some other variables like the the uncontrollables, so to speak. You know, weather, sun, rain. You know, stuff like that, and pitch conditions. I mean. Shoot, seventy-five percent of games now I'm seeing are on turf, so rain is almost irrelevant. Maybe it speeds up the, the ball a little bit, but you know, back in the day when turf wasn't around, you're playing on some pretty poor surfaces. It's tough to connect some passes under certain weather conditions. So obviously that's a, a variable too. We're not going to get too deep on that one, but just something to think about when um, tactically planning for a game and at the game, and you're making adjustments on the fly. Um, well, let's do this. Let's wrap up. Let's give you final words. Take your time. I want to hear some, uh, some in-depth, some things that you feel were important during this conversation that you'd like to reiterate for uh, some of our viewers. Uh, Coach Sam, can I start with you, please? I think a, a very important piece when learning to and when trying to master building out of the back is just being able to think quickly as a goalkeeper, you know, trying to anticipate decisions, movements, options, and being able to look for and recognize those. I think it needs to be, building out of the back needs to be worked on a lot more from the youth age all the way up because of how important it can be. And as a goalkeeper, I can see everything. I can see all of the options and field in front of me. So that what, that's what makes goalkeepers so important and vital to building out of the back because with our communication and with us being able to see everything, we're almost, we can almost orchestrate that build up and we should be able to see and recognize that. And that's what I try to get across to my goalkeepers from the youth age up. Right on. Coach Matt. So if we're talking developing you know, your own footwork and your, your connection with your back line uh, to start with uh, and building out of the back, you know, that's going to start in your training. Um, that can be, you know, both your goalkeeper specific training, um, just working with your feet, you know, getting those movements. Cause we do have certain movements as goalkeepers that we see, you know, we're maybe taking a touch and looking to play that ball. Um, but then it's getting involved with your team too, is just to, play be a field player as well um you know a lot of coaches will say that it's good for uh someone that wants to play goalkeeper to play on the field as well you know up until a certain age um and you know really that age can be maybe until you hit high school um until then you start to really hone in on just playing your specific goalkeeper position um but you know i've heard a lot that it's always soccer player first uh, as a phrase in when talking about goalkeepers because um, we are the 11th field player. You know, it's not 10 field players and one goalkeeper. You know, you have 11 players on the field. Um, so you develop that in your training. And then once we start to see that success translate onto the field, that's when the confidence builds. And then we can start to look, you know, at those next layers, the bigger passes as you get older and develop more strength on uh, striking the ball. Uh, that's where that all comes into play. And it does take time. Um, but developing that first pass, just finding that next player, being confident with the ball at your feet starts in the training, um, translates into the game, and the mistakes are going to be made. But then if we keep going, we keep experimenting with it, um, the success is going to come, and then that's when the confidence just goes from there. Uh, Coach Duff. I, mean, I think these two did a great job there of summing everything up. I would say I'd always encourage, especially in, in the winter season for futsal, get on the field. Don't go in goal for futsal. Go on field. Work on those short touches. Uh, get as much in your toolbox as you can. Don't focus when you're taking like when you're working on long passes. You know the second phase of the game. Don't focus on the power. It's all about the technique. I know as a young goalkeeper when I was learning, my focus was get as much power as I can. And what ends up happening, the ball goes nowhere. Once I realised it's not all about the power, it's more about technique. It's funny how far the ball started to go. Be uh, be very tactically aware for knowing your situations. But other than that, as long as you're confident and be a good decision maker. But like I said, get as much field experience as you can. Yeah, I think you all hit the same topics. You all summed it up quite well. Um, from a, I'll just summarize it from a goalkeeper coach's perspective. If, if you're looking to build out of the back, my advice to you would be coach from inside the goal. And I know that's an obvious one, but at the same time, be there and always be in your goalkeeper's ear about the decision making part. Because if, if the trainings, if they're on par with their training and from a foot level, uh, foot skills, 
uh, from a like just a tactical awareness perspective, you can be there for them. And I think that's the education I think a lot of goalkeepers need. Um, and, and if they can have your support during training or during practice when they're working at getting out of the back and you're right behind them on the field talking to them and uh, making them aware of what the opportunities are and, and speaking to all this, I, that their, their knowledge is going to skyrocket. And I think if you can really work closely with them during those times, it'll, it'll benefit everybody. It'll, because there's, as Mark said earlier, there is so much – on the goalkeeper during building out of the back, whether you're leading it, whether like Coach Sam was saying, you're orchestrating it, whether you're organizing and moving people around, whether you're there for an option and you're, you're communicating and you're giving them not only verbal cues, but nonverbal cues when they're playing it back to you. There's so much for a goalkeeper to, to understand. I think it's a very difficult piece because again, if you mess up, it's goal. So it's always on the, the highlight reel, so to speak, which is not a good thing. So, you know, be a development academy, grow up understanding that mistakes are gonna happen but it's the best opportunity to coach. Guys, with that said, I want to thank the panel today, Coach Mark, Coach Sam, Coach Matt. Appreciate your time. Everyone out there, stay tuned for our next episode. Thank you. Thank you.